Hey guys, Frosty here with another edition of Hand of the Week for you. Uh, in this hand, I'm going to show how I play uh, King Queen Offsuit here uh, a little bit non standardly um, because I have a read on my villain uh, as being an aggressive, kind of bluffy, uh, casual player. Um, a little bit fishy. And um, yeah, I'll just start by jumping right into the hand here. It's basically going to fold around to me at uh, middle position here, and I make a pretty standard open with King Queen Off. Um, I get flatted by a player right behind me who's a regular player, I think. And then we get flatted by the button who's going to be our uh, our villain in this hand. Um, and I'm going to talk about how I would play this hand against a regular player as well. But anyways, so we fought pretty well here. Uh, I don't really have, I can't really remember any specific history with the villain on the button. But we were clashing a little bit. He was basically very high VPIP, preflop, preflop raise kind of stats. Um, pretty fishy. Uh, he was calling pretty much everything pre-flop and, and not folding unless he really had to. And he was also being very aggressive, like whenever it was checked to him he was firing, uh, which is very important for this hand and probably the probably the number one uh, important factor uh, that played into this hand. And as for the regular, the nice thing about having the button come along here is that he can't really get too tricky. Uh, he can't really, I don't expect him to bluff raise me too often here because he can't really expect the button to fold um, as much as he'd like, I think. So when we're three ways like this with the fish, I, I think he would basically be calling with all his super strong hands, like like all his sets, ace, queen, or better type hands. And I don't think it would be worth it for him to bluff with like sevens or eights, like turn those kind of hands into a bluff, or or try to bluff me with like over cards, like ace, king, or eight, or ace jack or hands where he might be tempted to bluff me uh, if the pot were heads up because this board could hit his range more than mine etc but anyways so I think it's a pretty obvious spot to fire out a c-bet and I go ahead and fire uh, about 75% pot and I get flatted by the villain on the button so this is great right now we got our villain heads up uh, pretty good flop for our hand and we are out of position which kind of sucks but I'm still pretty happy with things so far and now the turn comes an 8, and okay, against a regular player in the spot, if like a regular player was calling me on the button here, um, that 8 is a pretty insignificant card. Uh, I'd always like think of the chance that they might be floating with a backdoor spade draw, um, but other than that, at this point in the hand, I would kind of expect a regular here to have a range of like, um, anywhere from like, a mid pair of like say eights or better or ace queen or possibly an over pair um possibly a club draw as well that they're playing a little bit cautiously i think like a big combo draw like six seven of clubs would probably raise the flop i think i think like a hand like even like queen jack or like queen ten suited might raise that flop as like a bluff almost uh, rather than call down so I, I would be pretty scared of a regular in this spot uh, or a little bit scared, I should say. Um, and against a regular player, though, I would definitely be like double barreling this board. I would like almost always be firing the turn uh, as a merge, basically. It'd be a little bit for value, a little bit for a bluff. I'd have to reevaluate things if I got called again. If I got called again, I'd pretty much have to realize that I'm beat in most cases. I think, e even though there are two draws out there, I don't think they would continue with the draw too often. So anyways, I, I think that I'd have to bet though because if I check, I really do, if I check call, I really turn my hand pretty face up um, as being a one pair type hand or maybe a club draw and I think they can blow me off the river a lot. So yeah, I like, I get my whole, I'm, the only reason I'm bringing this up is just because I'm going to play this hand completely different uh, than I would against a regular player. So instead of double barreling this spot, <coughs> excuse me. Instead so of double bailing the spot against our villain here, um, as I said, he he's very aggressive, and that eight isn't necessarily an insignificant card for him because he's been calling so much preflop and so much on the flop that you know, for all I know, that eight could have made him one pair, uh, could have made him two pair, could have made him a straight, um, could have given him a flush shot, or it, or it could be a blank. But the point is, I just don't really know. So. The fact that he's been firing out like every time when checked to as well means that I kind of want to turn my hand into a bluff catcher here. Um, 
but more importantly, it's not just a bluff catcher against these type of players, and, and this is important as well, because against a regular player, um, I can't really expect a regular player to ever think that he's going to be value betting a hand like Queen Jack on the turn and the river. Like, a regular player is going to know that if he fires this turn and gets called, his Queen Jack probably isn't good, his Queen 10 probably is never good, he's, he's probably up against a, a better Queen or an overpair or something like that, and I, and I wouldn't expect them to fire for value. Against a fishier player, however, that's definitely not the case. I think a fishier player might still think that they have the best hand if they have like a Queen Jack, Queen 10 type hand, or maybe even like a Pocket Jacks, Pocket 10 type hand. They might actually fire for what they think is value. So there's a lot of good that can come from check calling here, even though the board's shaping up to be a little pretty wet and a little bit scary. Uh, against these like really aggressive guys, I really like the check call line, and then I kind of reevaluate on the river. So that's what I end up doing here. I just check, and he fires like super big, like pretty much full pot, and I don't really know what to make of it because I haven't seen him do it too often, but the main thing is I know he's kind of fishy, and like there's no way I'm going to check fold just because of his sizing, even though, even though I guess in general players that bet out like full pot like this aren't fluffing that much, but... That's very opponent dependent, and this guy just seemed kind of crazy to me. So I didn't, I definitely didn't believe he had like six seven. I don't think he would have actually made it that big if he actually had a super strong hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and call him. And the river is really good for us here, um, bringing the four diamonds. Like all the draws missed, or all the flush draws missed, and the board paired. So if he did have like, if he did like have like five eight on the turn, he's not losing. Um, and it just makes it like it just puts or it just makes it like so or the, the it just makes the number of hands that beat us a lot less likely, which is good. So again, my plan is just going to be to check call here. But then he, uh, I check and he and he just shoves. Uh, he shoves 87 and 73, which is like kind of very unexpected. But at the same time, I just like call him super fast because I just didn't expect him to be that strong there. I couldn't really put him on, a, on an exact hand, but a lot of the times it's pretty much impossible to put these guys on exact hands, and it sometimes it just comes down to having a hand as strong as, as strong as top pair with a really good kicker against a board that breaks out all draws uh, against a super aggressive, spazzy opponent. So I just called him pretty quickly, and uh, I was kind of surprised to see his hand, Queen Jack, but that was pretty much what I was just talking about earlier. Um, there's a good chance he thought he had the best hand. Uh, I'm really not sure if he was trying to pull some super sophisticated bluff, but I doubt it. I think that their thought process was probably just that they have a top pair with a pretty good kicker, um, let's get the money all in kind of thing. I doubt that they were reading too much into my hand range or thinking too in-depth about the hand uh, in general. Um, but you never know. But anyways, I thought the time was just kind of interesting, mainly in that it shows how I would play the same hand completely differently against two different opponents, and I think that's important um, for pretty much every hand you play in poker. Uh, the line that you take uh, should probably be catered to the specific opponent. Um, so yeah, that's about all I got for you guys. Feel free to answer or ask me any questions or comments um, on the Facebook page, YouTube, or the blog, and I'll do my best to respond to them. And I'll catch you guys next week with uh, another hand of the week. Um, good luck at the tables, guys.